else. And this is really important, right? Because a lot of people are talking about all these diet drugs right now and all these diet fads. But the bottom line is, if you're an emotional eater and you're eating for the wrong reasons and you don't even know how to eat well, then any quick fad is well, exactly what it is. It's a fad. It's short term. And eventually you're still going to have to learn how to eat well and how to balance your emotions and how to balance your reactions to things so that you're not always turning to food when you're frustrated, when you're sad, when you're tired, when you're bored and everything else. We have to improve the relationship with food if you're ever going to have long-term success and feel good long-term. Eating and food is something that we are in a constant relationship with. It's it's like the world. It's, it's a relationship with ourselves. It's a relationship with others. It impacts almost every facet of our lives. And so I know that a quick fix, something like, you know, being on a drug that kills your appetite feels tempting and desirable. But what happens when the appetite comes back in, right? And what if you're still such an emotional eater? You don't know how to react or or figure out a way to have this positive relationship with food that where you see it as something that's actually giving you energy, that's actually like keeping you feeling fit, feeling strong, get, and improving your overall mental and physical health because we know that healthy foods in, contribute fiber, which is the fuel for our gut, which improves our gut microbiota, which is important for our mental gut brain connection. It's been associated with lower risk of depression and anxiety. So just deciding that you're going to turn off all your appetite, um, which is, it's a healthy thing to have an appetite, like just to turn off your appetite, turn off your intake is not necessarily going to help you in your overall life goals of being just a healthy, well, positive, you know, energetic human being. So let's talk about how emotions play a role in weight loss. Well, the bottom line is they largely contribute, right? Like I'm a registered dietitian with a master's degree in nutrition. I've studied all this on nutrition, but I will tell you as someone who's lost hundred pounds and has been having a decade of practice counseling clients, nutrition is literally just a third of the pie. And so if someone tells you like, oh, you're going to go on a diet and we're going to balance your macros, we're going to change your calories and everything like that. It's great, right? Like you're probably going to have results. But at the end of the day, that's not sustainable. That's not a habit that you can sustain. Counting calories is not a sustainable habit, right? It's just something that when you focus on, it works. And when you don't focus on it, it doesn't work, right? So we need to think about like, what are some healthy habits we can put into this? And how can we see nutrition as just a third of the pie? And how do we balance out the environment around us and the emotions around us to also be working for us to improve our overall bodies and healthy eating choices. So emotions are definitely a third of the pie, right? Emotions are a huge piece of it. I have a client now who works in one of these offices where it's basically whatever you want to eat. They, the company very generously provides a lot of free snacks, cereals, crackers, and all these things. And between two and 5 PM, this client of mine, like goes to this, all you can eat buffet of snacks and it really becomes her downfall where she's just overeating. So that's really a perfect trifecta of is it nutritional, right? Is she not eating a filling enough lunch, which is very possible. She's not drinking enough water. Is it, you know, environmental that it's an all you can eat buffet. And at that hour between two to five, they're keeping out a lot of like the high starchy processed sugar, easy to grab snacks. Or is it also emotional? I mean, this is a stressful time, two to 5 PM. You look at the clock, you're already exhausted. You had a long day, especially if your energy has been slumping as it is. And then, you know, well, if you're a parent, you already still have to, you know, get your kids from school or put them to sleep. You probably still have more emails to, you know, answer to later in the day. Like there's so much more in the day. And so if you're running high in stress as it is, then this two to 5 PM point is the very vulnerable point, right? And so, yeah, nutritionally, you can make a healthy snack, but if your environment is set up where insight in stomach, what you see is not really the foods working for you. And emotionally, you feel like you're in a slump. It really sets us up to make unhealthy choices. And how do we really like anchor it so that we can improve all three of these pillars? Well, starting with emotional, right? Studies really do show us that when we're stressed and our cortisol is high, we actually do tend to reach for quick grab sugar, high starchy foods, right? Because we see that that spike in blood sugar response that these cookies and crackers and bowls of cereal give us actually do impact our dopamine release, right? They actually almost give us a high. So it really is a natural thing that when you're feeling at a low, that you would crave those quick response foods that are giving you that little like dopamine kick of sugar. The problem is a muffin in the afternoon, a couple of bowls of sugary cereal, they really just lead you hungrier over time. And so when you go home, 
you're not making the best choices, right? Then it's like crackers, cheese, pasta. It's really nothing that feels balanced and and well sorted out. So I'm really grateful for my meal delivery service. I have like so many of them next to me. I have the baked salmon poke bowl and the vegetarian sweet potato, jap chai, um, noodles, which is so good. I have like the tuna um, crusted pistachio cakes and arugula salad here, which is like one of my favorites. And that's great for those moments. So you nutritionally can say like, if I'm hungry, what should I be eating? And if I'm not hungry, what should I be doing instead? Right? Like, like, why am I eating? Right? So you have to ask yourself, is it habit? Is it hunger? Is it really just emotions? What else can you give yourself to better handle your emotions in that situation? If it's exhaustion, sometimes it's like a tea or a coffee. Tea has been clinically proven to help relieve stress. It could be the tannins, the polyphenols, you know, the scents, the aroma, the warm cup in your hand, and it may be even a little boost of caffeine that gives you a little bit more energy so you feel like you could tackle the second half of your day. You really got to get into problem-solving mode. And so back to the start of talking about like the quick fix and the pills. Yes, it's so much easier to say like, you know what? I need a quick fix. I don't want to think. But the bottom line is, this is a relationship. And if you want to have a positive relationship with yourself, with your body, with your energy, with your needs, with the people around you, you really got to be thinking about improving your relationship with food. Because how you have a relationship with one thing tends to be how you have a relationship with everything. And if you end up in this like crash and and influx mentality with like, I feel at a slump with my energy and a slump in my emotions. So I go for a quick fix thing, like lots of sugar and lots of empty, you know, starchy calories that don't have protein, that don't have fiber. The word empty is because it doesn't contain protein and fiber, right? So it could be a good amount of calories. It's not completely empty, but it's not substantiating you and nourishing you with the nutrients that you need to actually thrive, right? So that typically leads to another crash, which can make you irritable, which can make you moody, which can really just keep slumping your energy over time. So I'm always going to recommend for a healthy lifestyle choice and for healthy meal prepping and just to simplify your life, always go back to my four words, water first, veggies most. Water first, veggies most. When you're feeling super hungry, irritable, potentially even using the S word, starving, you got to tell yourself, 16 ounces of water first. I need to drink water first. Before my coffee, before my snack, before anything else, I need 16 ounces of water first so that you're alleviating that rush, that impulse, that anger, that response. And you can think more consciously. So you realize I'm not starving. I might be hungry. What's something I could use to nourish my body? And then you're going to follow that up with veggies most. Yes, maybe I should grab some baby carrots and hummus or like cauliflower rice or a vegetarian sweet potato bowl with lots of sauteed veggies. If you have them on hands, like in sight, in stomach, set your environment up that veggies most is not a foreign concept. You know, baby carrots, sugar snap peas, Persian cucumbers, cans of hearts of palm, frozen vegetables that you can throw in the air fryer or saute pan, like my meal delivery service to simplify the whole process for you. But really, you have to set your environment up for success so you can be thinking, what are these healthy habits and lifestyle choices I can be making to improve my emotional response, to improve my food choices, to improve my overall relationship with food, to improve my body, how my body looks, my energy, my overall state, my sense of confidence, and overall quality of life. You know, again, like going on some of these like pills that kill your appetite, but then lead you to eat like 20 calories a day. You're not really going to be like, excited to go on a bike ride on the weekend necessarily. You're not really going to have the energy to do things. You're going to be losing a lot of muscle in the process. So you need food that actually contains protein as well. You want protein at every meal, which is why, again, shout out to my meal delivery service. I happen to just be surrounded by my meals right now. Um, This is blackened rockfish with mashed potatoes and sauteed spinach. It's balanced. It has the protein in the fish. It has a sauteed spinach in the vegetable. It has the mashed potatoes. And you know that it's not made with heavy cream because all my meals are dairy free. So it's made with like probably coconut milk and just healthy fats and nourishing nutrients that improve your relationship with food, improve your taste buds and make it so that you're not just like not preparing, not thinking about it, driving around stressed, vulnerable, stuck in traffic. And then you get just quick sidelined by fast food and you run into maybe Starbucks or somewhere to get a muffin and call it lunch. It's not lunch, you know? And when you do these quick grabs or open up Postmates, Grubhub, Uber Eats, and you're feeling hungry and irritable and, and low energy, 
those apps are designed to just really overwhelm you and give you that decision fatigue where you're just like, okay, what's the quickest, fastest thing I could do? And just be super vulnerable to all those like upsells, like extra rice, extra wontons, extra fried food that afterwards you're going to end up spending too much money eating way too much, like just heavy, greasy food. It's just not going to make you feel good. So again, it's like, you have to be thinking about this relationship with food as a relationship with yourself and really think about food as how do I want to feel while I'm eating it and also after. And I think a lot of people talking back to emotional eating, I think a lot of people are scared to think, how will I feel while eating it, right? Because when people are eating food, they're so scared. If I order the salad or if I order the fish and sauteed spinach and extra roasted broccolini and everyone else is getting a burger and fries, I will feel left out. Like I will feel sad. I will feel deprived, right? And a lot of people get very stuck in their head and they're so scared of like this, this feeling deprived or feeling left out or having that sense of FOMO. And I really encourage you to change your mindset and, and say, What if when I ordered this, again, like delicious blackened rockfish with mashed potatoes and sauteed spinach instead of a burger and fries or lots of pizza and fries, what if instead I wasn't feeling deprived, I was feeling proud? What if I chose to feel proud about my choices in that situation? What if I chose to feel energized or thankful for my body or optimistic about how I'm going to feel afterwards for making this choice? What if you can decide in your own mind how you get to feel in that situation and change the script from not feeling FOMO, but JOMO, having a joy of not eating those foods that don't necessarily make you feel the best and and put you further from your goals, but actually feel proud of yourself and optimistic and joyful and excited and confident about your choice because you know it's going to incorporate, it's going to contribute to your overall mental and physical health and improve potentially your digestion and then improve potentially your sleep and then, you know, improve your overall quality of life and what you feel like you can do following the meal and how you're going to live and contribute that as like a healthy choice that kind of goes into the bank of your overall habits that, you know, really make up your overall well being. So, this is like obviously like a big rant and talking about emotional responses and you know just how to balance a plate and how to improve your overall relationship with food but i really hope it helps like you get some takeaways here and realize that don't avoid learning on how to have a healthier relationship with food i know it's easy i know quick fixes and quick diets and and you know drugs and macros and calories and and fads and things that send you just you know like random fuelings or whatever to take that are all pre-thought out for you. Like, I know it's like so tempting to not have to think about your food and I don't want you to overthink it. I want you to think about it simply. Like, let me just get some, drink some water first let me eat more veggies and let me try to get protein at every meal. It doesn't have to be overcomplicated. You don't have to cut things out. You don't have to cut out fries. You don't have to cut out cake. You don't have to think no sugar. You just have to think, how can I focus on drinking more water and eating more veggies in each of my meals? Because I will tell you, when you focus on eating half plate veggies at a meal and getting protein in as a quarter, you're never going to overeat the fries, the mashed potatoes, the bread. You don't have to overthink it. It can be made simple, but you have to be thinking, what are first veggies most? How can I contribute to my overall health and my relationship with food and my mental health and my overall quality of life by changing some food choices today? And I hope that this inspires you and helps you realize that you can have a healthier relationship with food and that's going to contribute to your overall sense of confidence and well-being and it should be celebrated and exciting, okay? And you shouldn't feel defeated and you shouldn't feel deprived and all of that is really just a mindset and if you can rip yourself out of that mindset into this positive mindset of healthy lifestyle is a positive thing. Healthy choices are healthy self-care. And how I choose to, you know, respond to my emotions is how I'm going to choose to respond to a lot of things in life. So I should really think about it and try to be more patient and in control and calm and excited about making a healthy choice in these situations, because that's going to contribute to my overall relationships with myself and others. And I hope that this was helpful. I love you so much. And yes, I will save this. It's going to be on YouTube as well uh, to rewatch with closed captioning if you missed it. Love you so much.